me voy a matar, te digo, tipo, uy, 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 me voy a matar, uy, uy. Hello everyone, welcome to Odd On Demand, where I post videos every week about pop culture, politics, and everything in between. If it sounds like I'm wheezing, out of breath, struggling to breathe, on the brink of death, um, I kind of am. I have like a kind of cold situation. So sorry if you hear some like wheezing <laughs> in the microphone, but I'm gonna struggle through for y'all. So did I binge Bridgerton in 24 hours? Yes. Did I love the fact that I was seeing like these black women here and there walking around in nice little dresses, mingling like royalty because I'm incredibly tired of seeing black suffering in TV and movies? Yes. Was I annoyed? but not surprised at the fact that there were literally no darker skinned women with any kind of speaking roles or complexity or any kind of love interest except for like the wise sage Miss Danbury. Lord Bridgerton, do me the honor. Yes, but I mean, in general, like I'm really simple. Like I'm very easily amused by TV shows, movies. So I was looking at the costumes, the ballrooms, the settings, the songs, the love story. I was eating it up until I saw this discussion in Lipstick Alley titled Shonda Rhimes Never Cast Black Couples. And I started thinking, <laughs> I've watched almost every Shondaland show and Shonda's given us every combination under the sun at this point. A white woman and black man, an Asian woman and a white man, an Asian woman and a black man, a Latina woman and a white man, a white man and a white man, a white woman and a white man, several black women and white men. Etc. But Shonda actually has never given us like a successful case of black love, especially not in like any kind of leading capacity. And people are upset. Author Corey Haywood called Shonda, and I quote, nothing but a white loving sellout who selfishly produces content that elevates white characters above their black counterparts and perpetuates the idea that people of color aren't capable of sustaining healthy, lasting partnerships. Like, damn. <laughs> So let's like kind of get into this. Like I consider myself somewhat of a Shondaland connoisseur. So I'm gonna just break down the relationships and tropes that she loves to inject in her shows and hopefully try and answer the question like, is Shonda obsessed with interracial relationships? Does she owe us a black couple and why haven't we seen it yet? Like, you know, um, go ahead and sit back, relax, subscribe, grab a little snack and let's get into it. Before we answer that question, I think it's really important to kind of dive into Shonda's relationship with race, especially as a producer and a writer and the role that race plays in her shows. Because low key, like her approach to race has been very consistent. Shonda's always been very intentional with how she diversifies her cast. Like for example, for the pilot episode of Grey's Anatomy, Shonda purposely wrote every single character with no description of their race, their ethnicity. Some characters were, didn't even have last names. So the casting was really wide open. Out of the nine cast members in season one of Grey's Anatomy, four of them were people of color, making it like one of the most like diverse and successful television dramas on any major network at that time. Because like, mind you, this was 2005. We weren't seeing like the diverse kind of like black representation that we were seeing in the 1990s with all those popular sitcoms. Then came Scandal and Shonda made Kerry Washington the first black woman to lead a major network drama in over 40 years. But apart from just having like a lot of people of color in her cast, Shonda's shows were unique in another way. Like they kind of lived in this like post-racial universe and she would make her cast and her dramas operate in this kind of post-racial environment. Like it seemed as if like Seattle Grace and you know Olivia Pope just navigating Washington just had so much drama to deal with that like racial issues and issues of um, like discrimination, exclusion, those things just took not even just a back seat. Like they kind of just weren't even really talked about or discussed like in Shonda shows like Shonda would just very rarely allow the race of her characters to be any sort of plot point or point of tension and this is consistent throughout almost all her shows. Christina Yang's race was never brought up as some kind of like cheap dig or like some way that her co-workers could undermine her for her rapid success and like rise to the top and you know like in her relationship with Dr. Burke it their races were never a plot point even though they were an interracial couple like it was just never an obstacle 
people or anything that they had to go past. Same goes for Olivia and Scandal, Annalise Keating and How to Get Away with Murder, and most recently Simon and Daphne in Bridgerton. When asked in 2005 why she tends to keep race or racial tensions out of her shows, Shonda said, I'm in my early 30s and my friends and I don't sit around and discuss race. We're post-civil war, post-feminist babies, and we take it for granted we live in a diverse world. Now, a lot of people criticize her for this like post-racial, race doesn't matter approach to her television shows. Author Donald Bogle says, we don't want to see a racial or cultural problem every week, but at some point, if you ignore them, it becomes dishonest. But personally, like I know this is a little bit controversial, but like I'm, I'm pretty tired of seeing like black struggle in TV and movies. Like I grew up watching Gossip Girl, Girl, the Vampire Diaries and just seeing all these white women kind of like navigate the world, find love, have issues that just weren't tied to race or like racial discrimination. And I just like remember being young being like, I want to see, like I wish I could see myself in these shows. And it just didn't feel possible until Shonda Rhimes started to make TV shows like that. But before that, a lot of TV shows and movies that had people that looked like me when I was growing up were about like racism and struggle and hardship. And I was like, damn, like can a black girl just be like moving around New York, like kicking ass and taking names, like damn. <laughs> And I don't mean to discount the impact of, you know, like The Proud Family, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, That's So Raven, but I felt like those sitcoms are more like comedic in nature and in the angst slash like drama niche that I was obsessed with, like when I was growing up, there really wasn't much, like there, there wasn't much representation um, until I started to see Olivia Pope in Washington going around being the best in her field, whipping these men into shape like it was like there was no tomorrow and just like living a life like kind of in like in this kind of post-racial utopia I guess. Like Olivia had the room to have issues that weren't tied to her race 99% of the time. So while I think it is incredibly important to portray you know like black struggle and black hardship because in ignoring it entirely leads to erasure and that is not the goal. I don't think that Shonda should be expected to cover issues of race just because she's a black creator because if that doesn't fit into her creative process, if that doesn't fit into her style, her brand, then I don't think that she has to do anything just because she's black. However, I do still think there should be a way to portray blackness in a way that isn't painful or isn't like a detraction from the character's quality of life. Like there should be the ability to portray like black joy and black happiness because it's not all about hardship. So while I appreciate Shonda's ability to kind of like weave diversity and representation into her shows, um, wait actually <laughs> most times like Bridgerton in my opinion was like kind of a swing and a miss it was kind of race baiting the colorism was kind of crazy I'm going to link some videos in the description box below that kind of go into a little bit more about like what was going on with Bridgerton's colorism but anyway most times she's able to weave diversity and representation into her shows without um making racial tensions a big plot point I just think we need to add some kind of like complexity into how black people are portrayed in tv shows because like it can't be like either 12 years a slave or like Bridgerton like there has to be some midpoint like you know so now that we hopefully like better understand her approach to race just in general and given the fact that she's used colorblind casting for almost all of her shows um I'm actually not that surprised that most of her couples end up being interracial just like when you run the numbers like if she's casting people that are like quote unquote like the best actors for that role just like running the numbers like it's you're probably gonna end up with a fair amount of interracial couples so to give us like intentionally a black couple Shonda would have to be like way more intentional about the race of her characters than she ever has been for any of the shows that she's produced thus far but it definitely does give you pause like of all the shows that she's produced of all the pairings why have we just not seen like a kind of successful or even long term or even like semi-successful black couple. Like apart from Richard and Bailey's marriages in Grey's Anatomy and the occasional black fling for Miss Annalise and Miss Olivia, like <laughs> we just haven't really seen a successful case of black love in Shondaland. And people have put forward a couple theories as to why. One of the potential reasons is that like major broadcasting networks, um, I mean still now, but even especially back when Scandal was coming out, are scared that white audiences will think that a show isn't for them if it has too many major characters that aren't white. And I think this is 110% true. Like you can see this reflected in Shonda shows as well. The leading black ladies are rarely, if ever, seen in the company of other 
Black Americans and are usually in non-Black or majority white spaces. It seemed like Shonda's leading ladies could have it all, like the love interest, the success, the power, but it had to be in this like majority white multicultural setting to make the show itself palatable to white audiences. Even though I believe Shonda when she says that she casts her shows using colorblind casting, when you look at like Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder, like Bridgerton, it seemed like Shonda had to at least in some way center all of those shows around a white character or multiple white characters to ensure the success of that show. And that's why we see like not just like an absence of black love, but like an absence of relationships between people of color like in general. So yeah, one explanation for why Shonda might be choosing not to explore a black leading couple is that for the ratings and success of her shows to remain constant, she needs to make her cast like, like black, diverse, but like <laughs> not too diverse. <laughs> and we've seen this in shows like NBC's Homicide, HBO's The Wire. Despite the fact that both of these shows were very, very critically acclaimed, they didn't receive widespread viewership because the unfortunate and kind of racist truth of the matter is that it's difficult to achieve widespread viewership with a majority non-white cast because the majority of American viewership, which is white, won't tune in unless they feel included in the narrative. To wrap this up though, like I feel like this is more of a problem with the industry as a whole than it is with Shonda Rhimes and her casting and her shows. And like, I'm very hesitant to put all the blame on her shoulders. Because she's one of the few black women who has this much pull in the industry, this much influence in the industry, I think that she has to shoulder a lot of the burden of how to represent black people and black love in the media. And if it's not in her creative vision to portray racial tensions and racial issues in her shows, then I mean, personally, I don't really think that she like has any compulsion to do so. And besides, I think that like Sean is actually way more concerned with expressing femininity and feminism than she is about necessarily like relationships or love. Like we have witnessed like toxic relationships between her black leading ladies and their white and black counterparts. I personally don't even think there is such a thing as like a successful clear cut relationship in Shondaland, like period. So while I would love to see like a successful black leading couple, um, I think that like her depiction of love as a producer is kind of like not, it's kind of, ne it's kind of negative. <laughs> and let's say she were to have like a black leading couple, like, just like her past dramas, there would be a hidden baby somewhere, an affair, a wife from like his past life, a murder probably. <laughs> like I very much doubt it would be like the idyllic, stable relationship that people are calling for because like, that's just not Shonda's brand. <laughs> anyway, y'all, this might be like a little bit of a controversial take, but I mean, like personally, I think that Shonda kind of makes relationships the backdrop of her shows and like focuses way more on powerful women and the decisions they have to make to get to the top. Um, and who knows, she might be, you know, like inching towards just like normalizing a black couple for white audiences. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.